I was content just talking about two of my favorite superhero films to date, but this episode's a bit special. It goes beyond the traditional ones. Beyond! That's right, Greg f***ing Miller's here today. Let's get started. Before we begin, I want to point out that this is less of a feud actually and more of just a praising of both these films. That being said, I'm going to defend Days of Future Past simply to give my co-host a run for his money. That's cute. Too bad my movie is better. I love X2 and that's mainly due to the stellar cast of characters. Obviously both films have Professor X and Magneto, but in X2 we get a much larger dose of these season actors. In DOFP, short for Days of Future Past, we get double the flavor and double the gum here. Not only are Gandalf and Jean-Luc Picard back, but so are their counterparts, played by James McAvoy, McAvoy, Macarena, it doesn't matter, and Michael Fassbender. In fact, most of the veterans are back, with the likes of Storm, Colossus, and Kitty Pride kicking all sorts of sentinel ass. Yeah, their parts are minor though, and the new class just isn't as exciting. Ex it's a play on words. Anyways, the script even knows these guys aren't that good as Havoc is reduced to a single scene and Banshee was removed altogether. They had to make room for J-Law to steal more time. I, we both know that Miss Rebecca Romaine Stamos is the better mystique. It's just Rebecca Romaine. There's no Stamos. She, she will always be married to Uncle Jesse. She will always be Mrs. Rebecca Uncle Jesse. They separated years ago. Always! Jesus, okay. I actually agree with you. I think Rebecca Romaine is the superior mystique. Jennifer Lawrence just looks like Jennifer Lawrence with blue makeup on. It didn't help that half the damn movie Fox felt like she needed to be in J-Law form. Why would she ever shapeshift from a male officer to a female one right in the middle of the army base? It's total trailer bait. I'm not sure you know how feuds work. Are you new at this? I'm gonna move on and quickly. Quicksilver... Lee. Worst Greg way ever. Evan Peters from American Horror Story was simply awesome to watch. Did you say Greg way? Yeah, it's like a segue, but it's more clever because I'm using my- Forget it. Realized I don't care. The prison break sequence alone is worth the price of admission, and it rivals Nay. Beats the Nightcrawler sequence from X2. Nothing beats Nightcrawler from X2. Alan Cumming was spot on and gave us a Nightcrawler that I fear we'll never see again. Hugh Jackman's all sorts of awesome in DOFP. He's more badass in X2. Need I remind you of the school raid? Schnick. Ah, you picked the wrong house, bub. It's the same place we see Colossus armor up alongside Iceman. Who are both better in future past. We get to see a fully formed Iceman, who was previously just teased at us in the last two go-rounds. Just ass play before. Ass play. That's where you went with it. New characters like Blink, a walking portal gun, and Bishop were great additions to the film. They really shine in their short parts, plus we get Tyrion Lannister in this movie. You, you do know his real name's Peter Dinklage, right? No, I'm pretty sure he's still Tyrion in days. He's actually a crossover character, this is a crossover franchise with Game of Thrones, wherein he has to bring balance to Winterfell, who his family has betrayed and basically ruined, uh, by enslaving all mute and kind. So off the mark, it's incredible. Days of Future Past did the impossible. It managed to make time travel easy to understand. Even with all the craziness going on and the jumping between past and present, things always managed to stay very simple to follow. X2 didn't have to worry about making a complex story easily digestible. Instead, it just focused on giving us a very tight script with an amazing amount of character development buildup, such as Dark Phoenix. Who was entirely ruined in X3 and then saved in DOFP. X3 never happened! Exactly. We also get to understand Logan's history. We see characters like Pyro become evil and we learn that Bobby's parents, namely his brother, are total douchebags. There are so many side stories going on, it's really a testament to good storytelling that it was all able to flow together as well as it did. The new X-Men film was given a tremendous task. A tremendous trask, if, if you must. 
Associate the new class with the old one. Brian Singer and his writers did this and then some. Fixing issues with the universe and setting up further installments was the cherry on the cock. Cherry on the cock. Is, are we, is this done yet? Can I leave? Round three. Wink. X2 has more action than John Stamos on a typical weekend. Which is to say, a f***ing lot. Again with Stamos? We mentioned the Nightcrawler introduction, but it's worth rehashing. It's still an awesome scene to behold, and it sets up the film sensationally. I say sensationally when I run out of positive adjectives. Thanks, Scar, but a shiny new era is tiptoeing Nero. And it's one that contains sentinel combat, Hugh Jackman naked fighting, Jennifer Lawrence of Arabia slide attacks, and much, much more. X-Men United has some truly orgasmic moments. A tornado chase, a mansion attack, a lover's quarrel with Jean Grey and Cyclops, and an extremely cool fight with Wolverine and Lady Deathstrike. X2 came out in 2003, and although the effects still look pretty damn nice, they are a bit weathered. They're a bit aged. And unfortunately, that's one wine that doesn't taste better over time. And that rhymed. Is that a crime? The fresh coat of paint Future gave us is a welcome treat, one I can certainly snack on for years and years. Everything from the clothing swaps in the past to Xavier's sexy hover chair just sits nicely in my tumbly. Okay, so just to be sure we're on the same page, you are some version of Winnie the Pooh in this scenario, gobbling up scenes from the new X-Men film. That's correct, yes. I would like this to be done. And now you sound like my wife when we're making love, but I can assure you, we've only just begun. This one's actually a wash. This is a wash indicator. Because both of these scores were done by the same composer, John Ottman. John Otterman. He's like half man, half otter. Wouldn't this whole feud be a wash then, since both were directed by Brian Singer? They're similar and great scores, okay? You really are not good at this, are you? Both of these films are now in my always adapting top 10 superhero list. They're actually in the one and two spot, right next to each other where they belong. And while I've already stated that X2 is one of my favorite films, Days is just a crumb better, just a morsel better. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat that up. Nom, nom, nom. There's no arguing that Days of Future Past is a damn fine movie, but upon viewing, I could not help but notice how many callbacks it made to its older brother, X2. The whole film is essentially a big tribute to a star that isn't close to dying out. It's a star that's getting more and more powerful with age, and I hope these newer generations appreciate it like we did. The bottom line is this, who are you gonna trust? A man such as myself, who spent the, the better half of three years establishing a web show community as a movie critic, or someone like Greg Miller, who at one point in time gave Uncharted 3 a 10 out of 10, when we all know Uncharted 2 is the superior vehicle. Right? <laughs> this is obvious. And now we come to the heart of the matter. That's what this was all about, you son of a bitch. You lure me on this show with empty promises of hot wings, but you just want to debate reviews from my- <laughs> Uncharted 3 and Uncharted 2 were both great games. Confirmed. Game feuds with Adam and Greg. Coming soon. Coming never! Well, this was fun, but now it's time to get down to business, as I've, I've been told kids say. Tell us what your favorite X-Men is in the comments below. Unless it's first class, then don't even bother, because it's overrated bullshit. There. I said it. I said what everybody else was thinking. Now, Greg, why don't you take this opportunity, now that everybody's pissed, to plug your stuff. I'm Greg Miller, and I'm all over IGN.com. Come catch my daily show, Knock Off, up at noon every Monday. We have cool interviews every week. Podcast Beyond Every Tuesday, the number one PlayStation podcast in the world, and all the stuff I do on YouTube. Then come follow me on Twitter at Game Over Greggy, and congratulate me on kicking Adam's ass in this feud. I want to thank you for coming on, Greg. This was truly an honor for you, I'm sure. More than just reviews, this is movie feuds. Just, seriously, why did, why, why did we do this? Is this, how, is this how desperate I have to be to be on the internet? This guy, 8,000 subs?